overnight, the January 6th Select Committee's latest court filing alleges that former President Donald Trump and one of his lawyers, John Eastman, were part of a criminal conspiracy to overturn the 2020 election. The committee writes, President Trump and members of his campaign knew he had not won enough legitimate state electoral votes to be declared the winner of the 2020 presidential election, but the president nevertheless sought to use the vice president to manipulate the results in his favor. favor. Excuse me. Join me now, CNN Chief Legal Analyst and former federal prosecutor Jeffrey Tubin and CNN Senior Political Analyst John Avalon. Jeffrey, I misstated, I think, exactly what the story is here. The January 6th committee is not saying they committed a crime. What they're doing in this court filing is telling a judge that there's enough evidence that they might have committed a crime that Eastman doesn't have attorney-client privilege. Correct. There is a doctrine of law called the crime fraud exception, which says that an attorney-client privilege communication is not privileged if the attorney and the client are working together to commit a crime. And Eastman, in this case in California, is saying, I don't want to turn over these documents because they're privileged under the attorney-client privilege. And the committee is saying, it's not privileged because you and the president were involved in a criminal conspiracy, so we want the documents. That's how this doc, this filing yesterday came to light. And John Avalon, you've been writing about what they suggest this specific crime might be for some time. Th that's correct. I mean, look, I've been big on accountability for the insurrection plotters, applying laws that in some cases were put in place by the Civil War generation after the last great insurrection. But in this case, I've been obsessed about this 1924 opinion by Chief Justice Taft about conspiracy to defraud the United States, where he makes it clear it's not simply a financial crime. It was something that could look a lot like what Donald Trump has perpetrated on the American people in the form of the big lie. Um, the question, obviously, is, you know, what will Garland do? It's not even a recommendation in this motion. Right. It's not about the, the Jan 6 committee. But you need to apply the laws that are at our disposal, many of which were put in place for just this kind of an insane eventuality in mind. Right. This isn't specifically about Merrick Garland. This, again, is about a court Correct. case to free up some emails that the committee wants from John Eastman. But you're absolutely right. The larger implication here is if there is a crime that's worth investigating here, should Merrick Garland be investigating it? Well, and I, I do want to offer one caveat. It is not entirely, let me put it affirmatively, they may be investigating this, and we just don't know it. I mean, there is a big January 6th investigation going on, and the full extent of it we don't know. And we do know that Rudy Giuliani, for example, is under criminal investigation for related matters, if not this in and of itself. But the really striking thing about this 60-page brief that was filed is you see all the evidence together for the first time. And, to, you know... The way we've been covering the story necessarily, it's like this witness said this, this witness said that. But when you see it pulled all together, it's really very striking. And and let's give me one, let's give you one example, something that I didn't either know or remember. At 2:24 in the afternoon on January 6th, while the riot is going on, while the um, the the Capitol is already being occupied, President Trump is tweeting that Mike Pence, Mike Pence, in effect, betrayed his office, encouraging some of the rioters, say, them to consider, uh, to continue. That's a, that's a big deal. I mean, that's actually a very significant piece of evidence that, you know, when you pull it all together, you say to yourself, boy, this sure does look like a crime. Yeah, and, and, and incitement of insurrection itself is mentioned some of these statutes. The other thing that happened yesterday is one of the Oath Keepers pled guilty to, to seditious conspiracy. Um, that's a big deal, too, among other things that were providing protection for, for Roger Stone at the time. So the pieces are starting to come into place, and that's, I think, what's... Jeffrey, just one legal question here. Eastman, what's the difference between being wrong, which Eastman could have been wrong about what the Electoral Count Act lets people do, and being illegal? When does it go from wrong to being right. criminal? Well, you know, this is, in many respects, the key question about the whole investigation here, which is, broadly stated, good faith. If you say that I really believe that the moon is made of green cheese, is that fraud when everybody knows it's not made of green cheese? Or is it, are, are some facts so beyond dispute that if you assert them, it's just automatically bad faith? And that's the question that they are going to have to address in a criminal investigation here because it is not a, uh, a, a crime to assert a legal proposition that loses. But the question is, 
How much do you have to be wrong for it to be fraud? But does this set up a circumstance where the president, the ex-president's got to have an insanity defense? I mean, the, this goes well beyond good faith. This is about responsibility and attempt to proactively overturn an election to stay in power. And ignorance seems like it, that's not going to be a convincing defense, especially given the evidence we know that was presented to you. We shall see. That's I very don't Trump. know. I mean, that's I don't very Trump. Well, no, I mean, I, I actually, know, I know, it, I know, it's I just, it's, it, it's, it's an unusual situation because usually fraud, you have proof that someone knew they were doing something wrong. You know, they falsified an invoice. They lied in a deposition. All of that is proof that they know they're doing something wrong. It's not the same kind of case. You know why there. it's also unusual? Most presidents don't try to overturn yeah, that. Is certainly true. But there is some. In, in this filing, there is some evidence that the, the Trump people and the lawyers were told repeatedly, "You don't have this authority. It's not theirs." Mm -hmm. So, including by Bill Barr, the Attorney yeah. General. I mean, it, it, it's it's not over. All right, Jeffrey Tubman, John Adler, thank you very much.